It's the start of the Don Fox era. And uh, unfortunately, it may be the start of uh, what many are predicting to be a lot of losses in the Fox era, at least the start of it, as it happened just Sunday against the Green Bay Packers. Hi, everybody. My name is Jeff Blanzi. I'll be your host for Sports Plus Chicago all football season long. It's nice to have you on board with us as well. Sitting next to me, number 96, you probably remember this guy, Alex Brown, defensive end for the Bears for eight plus years. Alex Brown, yep. Thank you. And we also have a sideline reporter that will be joining us every show. Her name is Shannon Lurch. Please say hello to Shannon. Hey. the show. I'm going to be bringing you some fan questions for that Ask Alex section. I'm also going to be taking it to the kitchen to taste some delicious food. So don't go away. Great, Shannon. We will see you then. Look forward to that. All right, Alex, let's get right to this game mm -hmm. against the Green Bay Packers. Were they or are they the team that you thought they were going to be when the season started? Simply put, no, they're not. I mean, this is a more competitive team. I think they, they, they tried hard the whole game. I think they had a great game plan, which we didn't see going into the game. Uh, going into a lot of games last year, we didn't see that. So going into the games uh, yesterday, they were prepared. They competed. They tried hard to the end. This is a completely different football team than I thought was going to show up Sunday. All right, so that's good news anyways. Mm -hmm. right, let's talk about some of the bright spots, <laughs> at least one of the bright spots. And that was the running back of uh, the running back Matt Forte. He was absolutely mm -hmm. spectacular, at yep. least in the first half yesterday, yep. when he scored his only touchdown. He finished with 141 yards rushing. As you take a look at Forte here, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you feed Matt Forte the ball. I mean, it's just you see he he finds a way to get in the end zone. You got to get the offensive line a lot of credit too, because they provided the holes for him to run. So he did it. He did a lot of it. And you keep feeding him. He had 24 carries, 141 yards. A lot of that came in the first half. But if you give it to him, he is a really, really good running back that can handle that load. Should they have gone to Forte more often, at least in the second half? 105 of those 141 yards rushing came in the first mm -hmm. half of that right. game. Yeah, I, I absolutely think so. I don't know what uh, Adam Gase, I don't, I don't know what changed it. But I tell you what, he, the score, it was an eight-point difference. There was no reason to change the game plan. You weren't down by two scores. You're down by one score through the fourth quarter. Three minutes left in the fourth quarter, you're still down by one score. You don't change the game plan. You keep feeding Matt Forte the ball. You keep Aaron Rodgers off the football field. That's how you beat a team like Green Bay. All right, speaking of Aaron Rodgers, he was really a thorn in the side for yeah. the, uh, for the uh, Bears yesterday. Uh, but, you know, he's been a thorn in the side of the Bears' first for career, really. Time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, talk about Aaron Rodgers and how good he was yesterday. He, he was dropping dimes, man. He was dropping dimes all over the place. He's putting the ball. The, the per, there's no defense for the perfect pass. And he was throwing a lot of them yesterday. So Aaron Rodgers, I, I mean, I, I believe he's the number one quarterback in the league. I think a lot of other people believe that. But he is unbelievable. And he seems to do his best work against our beloved Bears. Now, James Jones, the wide receiver for the Packers, he only had four catches yesterday, but it seemed like he caught more than that for 51 right. yards. Mm -hmm. But two of those four catches went for touchdowns. Here's right. the second of those two. Exactly. I mean, going into this game, I mean, you start, you think of Devontae Adams, you think of um, Cobb. I mean, those are the guys you think that's going to happen. You don't think they're going to go to or going to feature the guy that just joined the team on Monday. <laughs> you just don't think that. So, but yeah, they come out, he makes some big, some big catches, catch a couple touchdowns, kind of loosen up kind of loosen up that defense. And then, I mean, it, it was all she wrote from there. He started to get everybody else involved. Then it was, uh, it was old Aaron Rodgers in that Green Bay offense. Now, Rodgers had 18 completions. Three of those completions went for touchdowns yep. against the Bears. Now, I, I know afterwards, a couple of the linemen were saying that if, they were, if, you, if you were told before the game that you were going to hold Aaron Rodgers to 189 yards yep. passing, you're mm -hmm. probably going to win the game. Right. Unfortunately, three of them went for touchdowns. Absolutely. I mean, you, you come into a game and you want to make a team like this one-dimensional. You want to stop the run or you want to stop the pass. One or the two. You, you can't let them do both. Unfortunately, I mean, you look at Eddie Lacy. He ended the game with just under 90 yards rushing. He, had, he added a touchdown late in the ball game. And then you look, it was Aaron Rodgers being so efficient. What, the numbers that I look at, zero interceptions, zero sacks. That's the problem. And that's how you beat the top quarterbacks in the league. The Aaron Rodgers, the Drew Breeses, the Tom Brady's. This is how you beat them. You have to get pressure on them. And we weren't able to do that. Yeah, you don't put pressure on Rodgers. In fact, Rodgers, the only time he ever got dirty or grass stained was when he was running the ball and sliding. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. yeah. so, I mean, he was that efficient for the, for the Packers. Yes, he was. I mean, when he's, he's so dangerous with his arm, when he starts to get his feet involved and he starts to, like, keep drives going, converting third downs, converting um, on second down, getting those long runs, that's when he's at his – I mean, he's, 
he's a lot more athletic than I think people give him credit for. He, he's a real good athlete. And he's got a good offensive line, too. He does. Let's talk about that Bears mm -hmm. defense real quick yep. against Rodgers. They had so much problems getting to Rodgers, mm -hmm. which, which made it you know, a, little, a little tougher for, for that defense and yep. made it a little easier for Rodgers. Yes, it, it did. I mean, the defense, you know, what we saw in the preseason was we saw guys getting after the quarterback and getting pressure on the quarterback. I mean, you don't always have to get a sack, but you have to get pressure. You have to get him off his spot. All this is about rhythm. So being in rhythm, and when you can get a guy off their spot, make that quarterback pump the ball, take another step to his left that he didn't want to take, it throws off the timing a little bit. We weren't able to do that. That was the problem. I mean, he was just too comfortable back there. If Aaron Rodgers is comfortable in the pocket, heck, sometimes he's not comfortable, and he still kills us. But when he's comfortable, we're in trouble. And he picked on the rookie ball, too, with Joe oh, Jones out there, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it bothers you because you see a guy – you said two years ago we had two Pro Bowl cornerbacks in Tim Jennings and uh, Charles Tillman. Now you see those guys leave, and now in the first game of the season, you know what Aaron Rodgers is going to do. He's going to pick on the new guy. He's going to pick on the new guy, and unfortunately those, those plays went for two touchdowns over him. He's going to have to get better. He was very successful at it. Too, yes. Well. All right, we're going to take a short time out here on Sports Plus Chicago. We're going to go back to Shannon, who uh, we have a segment coming up called Ask Alex. Mm. Want to know what it's about? Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> Questions? I'm good. Lease a new 2016 Fiat 500X for $189 per month. So whatever your style, find it at Bettenhausen Fiat of Tinley Park on Oak Park Avenue in Tinley Park and at BettenhausenAuto.com. Welcome back to Sports Plus Chicago. We're talking about the Chicago Bears. Next to me is Alex Brown. Mm -hmm. Number 96, that's what he wore when he played for the Bears. But right now, we're going to go to our segment we call Ask Alex. And that, of course, is hosted by our sideline reporter, Shannon Lersh. Shannon. All right, thanks, Jeff. I'm here with two super fans from the Bears. I've got Brace, uh, Bracey, no, Brittany, and Hannah Geraci, right? So you guys have got a question for Alex. What's your question for Alex? Um, do you think the Bears will make it to the Super Bowl this year? Wow, what a great question. Um, <laughs> you know what? I think, think about I that. I think there's a chance. There's always a chance. And if, uh, whew, man, um, uh, <laughs> you know, I, yes, there is a chance. I, I just, I'm going to be, I'm probably the only one in Chicago, I'm going to say this, I'm the only one that thinks that there's a little bit of a chance. A little bit. So, Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> we, we should change the subject to stump Alex, right? Um, Alex, I've got another question from you, from Bob. Bob, where are you from? Shorewood. And what's your question for Alex? Alex, do you think the Bears are uh, better running the 3-4 than the defense that they ran when you were running it? Oh, I'm always going to go with the defense, the 4-3 defense. The 3-4, you just you need different personnel. That's what I think. So you have to have different personnel to do it. You're, you need big guys. I mean, when you try to change, that first year is always the hardest year when you try to change it. Um, you don't have the personnel. You, you're turning 4-3 defensive ends into linebackers. You're turning a three technique like a Tommy Harris to do what Vince Wilfork would do. And that's just, I mean, they, they're not equipped to do it. So for me, I like the 4-3 because it puts more uh, pressure on the front four, which is where I was, and it puts pressure on us to get to the quarterback. That's me. I want the pressure. Give it to me. If I don't get to the quarterback, then when we get in the meeting, Coach say, you know what, Alex? You got to do your job. You get paid to do a job, do your job. That's what I want. The three four is um, for the linebackers, so I'm gonna go with the four three. I like the four three better. All right, thanks, Alex. Don't forget to keep your questions coming in. Come on, uh, go on Twitter, go on Facebook, send those questions in. You never know if we'll ask those on the air. We'll be right back with more Jeff and Alex. <laughs> The all-new Fiat 500X crossover. 
with 70 standard and available safety features, including options like blind spot monitoring, forward collision warning, lane sense lane departure warning, and all wheel drive. The capability you need now comes with the style and personality you want. Visit us at BentonHouseAndAuto.com. Your best car buying experience starts here. We are pleased and honored to have an actress from Los Angeles, Miss Myra Leo. Hi, I'm Myra Leal, and I'm here in the kitchen at Ember's Tap House. I am here with one of the owners, Miss Sherry Duvall. Oh my God! Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Great. Um, this place is absolutely insane. It's so busy. You must be so proud. We're so proud. We've been just under here, just under three months, and it's uh, it's going well. That's incredible. Yeah, um, we are really busy. Obviously, we got a TV show going on, so I'm going to let you go and uh, talk to my chef, Mike Hernandez. Great, thank Great. you, <laughs> Mike. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Oh my God, this food looks absolutely incredible. I was, a I had the luxury of tasting a couple of things uh, yesterday, and you know, I came back for more today. <laughs> so a lot tell, of people do. Tell me a little bit more about um, what's happening over here. Well, these are some of the things that we do great that we're very well known for here at Embers. Uh, we have some great appetizers. We're very well known for our Brussels sprouts. We're becoming famous for that. Our pretzel rods, loaded nachos. Uh, we have great pub fare or bar food. Uh, and some of the other things that we're very well known for are our hamburgers. Here we have a State Street burger. It's a double patty. Mm -hmm. uh, our breakfast burger. Yummy. And some of our entrees. Bacon crab cakes. I mean, who puts bacon in crab cakes other than me, right? <laughs> so, I mean, great food. These are all the things that we're getting very well known for. Then you can end your night with the uh, uh, fig newton bread pudding. Oh, that was wonderful. That was one of the things yeah. I definitely had. And I actually had some of your uh, strip bacon. And yes. um, you were telling me that this has become a sensation. I mean, the marination of it, I don't know how you prepare it, but it's amazing. Yeah, we do everything in house. You know, everything is from scratch, from our rubs to our sauces, everything else. So, we make our own uh, rub specifically just for the bacon. And people absolutely oh, love it. God. They're going crazy over it. We actually sell it as a side now uh, for people that are really in love with it. And everybody that tries it loves it. It's so good. So. And it's crazy, you know, I was talking to one of the owners, Sherry, and she was telling me that this place originally was just going to be a bar, and then all of a sudden, boom, it's like huge kitchen, I yeah. mean, huge seating space. How did you convince them when you came in to, like, not have just typical bar food and, and it become this. <laughs> I actually cooked dinner for them. I took, cooked dinner for about 35 people. Uh, I did a 10 course meal over the course of the entire night and I think that convinced them that I was actually halfway decent at what I did. So <laughs> they gave me all the culinary creativity to create the menu, uh, put stuff on, take stuff off. So they've invested a lot in me to to uh, take care of the food and you know the end result is just it is great stuff and uh, everybody we've gotten some great feedback about the food so well I am definitely a fan good good thank you thank you <laughs> well thank you so much for your time I really appreciate it and like I said I'm gonna try more definitely more items on the menu awesome well thank you Myra <laughs> I'll see you soon alright thank you Chicago. I'm Jeff Lanza, your host, along with the former defensive end of the Chicago Bears, number 96, Alex Brown. And Alex, we know we've talked about the defense so far. We've talked about Aaron Rodgers uh, mm -hmm. against uh, how well he did against the Bears. Let's talk now about our own quarterback, yeah. Jay Cutler. Your impressions after the first game for Jay uh, about Jay after you know the game against Packers under the new regime. I, I give him a C minus. I mean, it, it was an okay minus type of game. I mean, he, he didn't do anything spectacular. Um, I think he stayed with the game plan early on. You didn't see him checking out of stuff. You didn't see him coming out of the plays, getting into different plays, although there were times where I thought he should have done that um, to get into a better play when you see that that one play, that first play is not going to work. But I thought he was, he was on board. He ran the game plan. They had an opportunity to win. At some point in time during that game, we actually thought, we as fans, actually thought that they had a chance to win. Now, that didn't happen last year. So that is what this team right here, let's not forget, this team is being talked about as being one of the teams to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. So to be in a game where you've got an opportunity to beat this team, if you just tweak a couple things, you can't give them an F, but I find it hard to give somebody 
anything higher than a C minus when you go 50% completion and your QBR is under 70. And that's, that's just me. All right, one of the key plays uh, from the game against the Packers was in the second half when Jay Cutler had the Bears driving towards mm -hmm. the end zone, mm -hmm. and he threw a pass that seemingly had his receiver wide open, but yep. Clay Matthews, the Bears or the uh, Packers linebacker, read it perfectly and picked it off. Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't think Jay ever saw him. And that's just the thing. That's schemed very well by the Green Bay Packers. Schemed with probably their best player on defense and Clay Matthews. I mean, you, you get an opportunity to make a play and you look at an all-pro, at a pro bowler like a Clay Matthews, he's not going to miss it. He's going to make that play. I mean, that came with three and a half minutes to go in the game. I mean, they, it's just one of those things that you were hoping you didn't see it, but typically we always kind of wait on that play from Jay. I don't think this is like the, the place he's made in the past. I think he act Martellus was open. This was a hot route. Maybe he could throw it quicker, but you got to give a lot of credit to Clay Matthews and make it just one hell of a play. Do you think new offensive coordinator Adam Gase is giving Jay Cutler a little bit more freedom at the line of scrimmage in terms of audibles, seeing what the defense is doing, and letting him kind of call things himself? They talked about that a lot in the telecast yesterday. Uh -huh. Did you see that as well? You know what, I don't know. If, if that's the case, then what I would have liked to see when there was seven and a half minutes to go in the game, we're second and goal on the two yard line. <laughs> what I would have liked to see was Jay get us into a play where we give the ball to Matt Forte. That's what I would like to see. But we throw the ball three times, including the fourth down, and we don't make it. I mean, we're only down one possession. If we can get in the end zone there, so Jay make a call, make a tough call right there and say, you know what? I know the coach called this play, but I think we should run the ball. We're on a two-yard line. We got one of the best backs in the league. Come on, let's go give it to him. Were you surprised as everybody else that Forte did not? He did get the first down screen pass that got him mm -hmm. down to the two-yard line. Yep. So they had a second and goal from the two mm -hmm. and three straight passes. Were you surprised at least one time they didn't give it to Forte? Well, I wasn't as surprised as... As I was when I saw Pete Carroll do it with, <laughs> with Lynch, I, was, I wasn't that surprised. But I, I was kind of surprised being that the Bears were going five yards a pop every time they gave the Forte. And now you're at the goal line. Early in that first quarter, I believe it was, you give the ball to Matt Forte on the one-yard line, he get in the end zone. Why not do it again? So that was kind of my thing. I would have liked to see him give it to him. All right, getting back to Rodgers and the Bears' defense. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Rodgers seemed to have it his way yesterday because of, yep. of the lack of pressure on by, by the Bears. And we take, take a look at the highlight here because Rodgers, it seemed like you put a little bit of pressure on him, but mm -hmm. the guy is so smart, he gets out of trouble and oh, yeah. takes advantage of it. But see, this is the thing that people underestimate Aaron Rodgers is he's very athletic. He didn't look very athletic falling there, but, <laughs> <laughs> but he's a very athletic quarterback. And when you're chasing these guys, they're faster than what they seem on TV because I'm tired. This is the fourth quarter. I'm tired. I'm running after this guy. Yes, he seems he is a lot faster and a lot more athletic than people give him credit for. But he's still looking downfield. He's still looking downfield, waiting on that play. So the cornerbacks can't react right now. They cannot come off of their coverage to say, you know what, I'm gonna take, I'm taking this guy right now. You know, I gotta go get the quarterback. I gotta stop him from running. They don't they can't do that because Aaron Rodgers has that gun. His feet doesn't have to be set. He can throw the ball six yards down the field and hurt you. How do you grade the defense after the first week overall? They got to get out the quarterback. I'm a defensive lineman. If you, you come away with no, no pressure, no sacks, I'm, I'm, the D line, I'm giving a D. Uh, defense as a whole, I mean, the secondary gave up tons of big plays. Uh, I, I'm going to go with a uh, D plus. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go to D plus. I, I thought they did well against Lacey. 18 carries for 85 yards. He's one of the premier backs in the league. They did well against Lacey. You come in. I mean, you look at Aaron Rodgers. He is a. He's a. I, in my opinion, I think he's a great. He's the best quarterback in the league. A lot of people. Now that, you yeah. go 189 yards with him. He give up. I mean, he only throw for 189 yards. Eddie Lacey runs for 80, 89 or something like that. Like you think you, you're in that game. You got a chance to win that game. So. I say D plus because I need pressure on the quarterback. You have to come in this game knowing that, hey, I got to get pressure on the quarterback. Yeah. If you had to blame this loss on somebody or mm -hmm. some area, mm -hmm. where would that be? I think it's Adam Gates. I think he lost it um, somewhere in that fourth quarter. Somewhere in that fourth quarter around, how come Forte goes for over 100 yards in the first half and you're not, you're at no point in time are you more than two, uh, two series away from uh, taking the lead, why change the game plan? 
keep running Matt Forte, keep handing them the football, and I think this game right here stays in check. But keeping those guys, I mean, you, you got to look at um, Vic Fangio. You got to look at him, too, because he kept leaving the new cornerback. You, you keep leaving him out there on the island, even <laughs> though James Jones only – he just got picked up on Monday. You keep leaving him on the island. This guy's player, Aaron Rodgers. They have these little nuances, these little, these little checks where they – just a little, uh, uh, like go deep, you know, like go. And he goes and he catches the touchdowns on us. And you mentioned James Jones. He was released by the Raiders. He was mm -hmm. released by the Giants. Yep. The Packers see that. He's played with the Packers before. Mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers says, get him back. We need a receiver. Yeah. And Rodgers turns him into an all-pro. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Gosh. Amazing, wasn't it? It was amazing. It was amazing to see, honestly. I mean, you see a guy like that. You, you see two teams within a calendar year. You see him say, you know what? This guy right here, he's. Yeah, you're done. You're too old. You can't play. And then you put him with a good quarterback, and now he's, I mean, he might be NFC player of the, player of the week. You know? <laughs> he should be. So. <laughs> he should be. All right, we're going to take another short uh, timeout. Alex, yep. we'll be right back. And we'll go to Shannon, who is in the kitchen with Chef Mike. Uh -oh. All of that and more are coming back on Sports Plus Chicago. We'll see you in a few minutes. Questions? I'm good. Lease a new 2016 Fiat 500X for $189 per month. So whatever your style, find it at Fettenhausen Fiat of Tinley Park on Oak Park Avenue in Tinley Park and at FettenhausenAuto.com. Hi, welcome back to Sports Plus Chicago. We are at Ember's Tap House in Lockport. Hey, just tell, 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 tell. What? What is that smell? It smells so amazing, it smells good, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Let's go to oh our silent reporter, Shannon. She has the head chef here at Embers, Chef Mike. Shannon. I am so excited to be in the kitchen with Chef Mike, Embers Tap House. There is some amazing food going on, but we are unveiling the one, the only Dan Hampton Burger here today. So tell us a little bit more, Chef Mike, about how that came to be. This is the, yeah, the official Dan Hampton uh, Hampton Burger that we're making here at Embers. So here at Embers we use all uh, fresh ingredients. Uh, everything is from scratch. Our secret sauce, barbecue sauce, uh, house-made pickles, our burger made from certified Angus beef, freshly baked bread every day, uh, our maple Cajun bacon which is making us famous, and some country smoked ham. Now you say you got some secret sauce. What's the secret sauce oh, going I can't, on over I here? Can't. <laughs> he can tell me a little bit when, we get, when we get off camera, right? Maybe right. later, yes. All right, so all of these amazing ingredients, yep. we're going to put these together and show us how it comes together. Okay, great. So we have our uh, pretzel bun here. We're going to put some of our barbecue sauce on the bottom, okay? And then our burger patty there with the uh, maple Cajun bacon and cheddar cheese. And then we're going to put the other patty on there. So this is a double patty uh, burger. So Not for those a, that are on the diet, right? Right. You definitely have to have a big appetite. Put uh, a little bit more of that secret sauce. A little sauce. more of the yeah, secret I sauce. I like that yeah, secret that sauce. Sense. Perfect. All right. And then we'll do our house-made pickles and onions. And we'll put it all together like that with a steak knife in the middle to hold it all together. That so, is amazing. Hampt the Hampt Burger. You saw it first right here on Sports Plus. Now, I think we have to take a break because I need to dig into this sandwich and try it out because, you know, it's got pickles, it's got special sauce, it's got all of the amazing ingredients that I love, and I know people around here are going to love it. Mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit more, last thing about the burger. What kind of beef do you use? Uh, we use uh, certified Angus uh, beef. We use three different types of uh, meat. Uh, it's a proprietary blend uh, that you probably only get here at Embers. People go crazy over our burgers. They absolutely love them. And um, I don't know, why don't you take a bite? And, yeah, I know. Uh, let's, let's cut <laughs> off because I'm going to put the mic down and try this out. But don't go away. Mike and Alex are going to be coming right back right after this to talk a little bit more about bears and what's happening next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. We need a picture of that. We need a picture of that. The all new Fiat 500X crossover. 
with 70 standard and available safety features, including options like blind spot monitoring, forward collision warning, lane sense lane departure warning, and all wheel drive. The capability you need now comes with the style and personality you want. Visit us at BentonHouseAndAuto.com. Your best car buying experience starts here. All right, welcome back to Sports Plus Chicago. We have a few minutes before we wrap up this show. But uh, before we do that, we want to talk about the Bears' next opponent uh, mm -hmm. with Alex, and that would be the Arizona Cardinals coming up next week at Soldier Field. Yep. Quickly, a scouting report on the Cardinals. What do you know? Another good quarterback coming in here, Carson Palmer. Um, coming off a 300-yard game, three touchdowns. I mean, he did well. They ran the ball well. Their defense is really good. I mean, it, you look at uh, how Peterson locked down Brandon Cooks. Now you got to look at um, Peterson's going to be on Alshon Jeffrey. Can these other guys, can the, uh, the other receivers and Martellus Bennett and Forte still be in the passing game if Alshon is unavailable? Because Patrick Peterson is one of the best corners in the league. And if you throw his way, it could be a pick six. I'm telling you, it can happen. Don't try him. And Palmer will certainly test that Bears secondary again, like Rodgers did last week. Uh, they're going to love I mean, this film right here, the Bears, how, how will the Cardinals attack us if they're asking themselves that? Just look at the Packers film. They're going to do the same thing with John Brown. You got uh, Fitzgerald out there. They're going to do the same thing that the Packers are able to do. But now they have bigger bigger receivers. I mean, they, they haven't seen the big receivers that the Arizona Cardinals have. I mean, we haven't played, we haven't uh, played Detroit yet with Megatron, but they're going to see big receivers then. But this week coming up, Arizona Cardinals, you got to get on these big receivers. You're going to have to make some plays in some one-on-one -on -one situations. The pass rush will be vital. You have to, you can't come out of this game right here and expect to win with zero sacks, no pressure on the quarterback. You got to get to him hit him, make him uncomfortable. If the Bears can do that, they got a chance to win this game. All right, 15 seconds or less. How important is it for the Bears to get this win mm -hmm. at home mm -hmm. considering the following week they have to go to Seattle? You don't want to go to Seattle 0-2 because, honestly, that's a long flight. <laughs> that's a long <laughs> flight coming back 0-3. So you don't want to do that. You know that's going to be a tough game out there. It's always hard to win out there. You really want to get this game. It's not do or die, but it is close. All right, well, let's, hopefully we'll talk next week about a Bears win <laughs> yes. against those Arizona sure Cardinals. Stocks so. so appreciate it. For Shannon, for Alex, I'm Jeff. We'll see you next time on Sports Plus Chicago. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs>